So this week I've been mostly watching reviews on YouTube of the new Ferrari SF90. This is a car with almost 1000 horsepower. Seems to me that most reviewers respect what Ferrari have achieved with this car, respect the technology behind it and how they've done it, but crucially, they don't seem to love driving it. They respect it. They're almost afraid of it. I have to admit that in this clip in Top Gear, it certainly looks like it's delivering the goods. It looks like a lot of fun, but in reality, the feedback has been, most people have been left a little bit cold by how it achieves those insane speeds. I have to be honest, long before the SF90 came out, I was already of the opinion that this sort of power arms race that is going on just cannot end well and that some of the biggest casualties are going to be specialized sports car manufacturers like maybe Ferrari, McLaren and so on. Porsche is quite diversified and so it doesn't suffer quite the same issue but Ferrari in particular it's so steeped and so intrinsic in their identity that where do they go from here? So they can't keep just increasing power outputs infinitely so going forward how are they going to maintain their identity as Ferrari? But they're going to have to bring something different to the table. Anyway, we're going to talk about that more in a minute. As I said, I've long been a proponent of the fact that having a lot of power does not equate to driving fun or pleasure. So for example, at the moment, I have this Alpha 147 GTA. Now this has 250 horsepower. I think this particular car has a little bit more, but in any case, the example still stands. And that is that it's plenty of power for the road. I really don't drive around that any point in time thinking, oh God, this feels a bit slow. I wish I could have a bit more, more power. The problem is with cars that have a lot of power is you get in them and you're amazed by it. The horizon shrinks before you, but, it's a real sort of short-term trick. It has no, there's nothing that lasts about it. You get used to the extra power very quickly. And after that, it's like a one-trick pony. It amazes you for a little bit, but then there's just not that much to it. Probably the fastest car I've ever driven is a supercharged Audi R8. Twin supercharged Audi R8, which was putting out 750 horsepower. <laughs> It's one of my older videos, so not that great, but it is on the channel if you want to have a look at that. But anyway, the thing, the R8 is a great car anyway. 750 horsepower, it was absolutely mind-boggling and astounding. But did it actually make the car any better to drive? I don't think so. In the same way, I took my mum out in a modified Audi RS4. Again, supercharged conversion, and that had 650 horsepower, and I scared her half to death. Again, one of the older videos, but that car was just, well, it was just unbelievable because it was such a sleeper. But what I'm trying to say is, is that power is something that has a very short term benefit. What you really enjoy when you're driving cars is the feedback, the way they handle, the way they turn, the way they stop, the way they feel, the way they look, the way the interior is. That's what makes a car really rewarding to, to drive and to own, not massive amounts of horsepower. Now, if the identity of a car maker is so intrinsically combined, equating with power, what are they gonna do going forward? I mean, you have to say the SF90, it's a third of the cost, uh, if not more than that, of a LaFerrari and it's faster. What an incredible achievement, but, is it really worth it? Is it better than a Ferrari 355, really? Or a 360, or maybe a 458? Is it actually any better to drive than those cars objectively? It's gonna be awesomely faster, but what is the point of that? What is the point of going fast? My little Sprite has 90 horsepower. When you get close to the limit of that, I dare anyone to say that that is not fun. I've had some of the most fun times and dangerous and terrifying times in that very car. I wish the windscreen wipers at least weren't my god a truck. One of the other aspects of constantly chasing speed is the possibility of getting caught, which is getting increasingly likely. So my M1355i that I had before, that was a brilliant little car. It was super fast, it was rear wheel drive, it was comfortable, it rode really well. It was better than this in every way. However, to have any fun in it, you really needed to thrash it and to get the back end out because 
the steering was completely dead. And although the engine was really good for being turbocharged, it wasn't really all that rewarding. So what you'd end up doing is you'd end up driving it way too fast on the road. For me personally, that takes some of the pleasure out of it because half the time I'm worried about having a police car around the corner or a speed camera or something like that. So it just takes the fun out of having to drive that fast. Why do that when you have cars that you can drive very close to you or within the speed limit? My Peugeot 205 being a prime example of that, you could be in a 50, have the time of your life on a little country winding road, look down at the clock and you were at 50 or below and still having loads of fun. This hunt for more and more power made sense in the 50s and the 60s when cars were actually slow. But I think we've long gone past the point at which a car has enough power to be entertaining on the road. And yet some of these makers just keep on going. What's the point of it? So crucially, where does this leave Ferrari? They can't keep on increasing power outputs ad infinitum. Already, the SF90 with 1,000 horsepower is complete overkill, even for a lot of tracks. They need to maintain their image as Ferrari, but they need to find a new way of defining that image. So ultimately, what makes Ferrari Ferrari is that they have to be some of the best cars to drive in the world. At the moment, that balance is slightly going the wrong way. It's going towards the speed and complexity. It should really go back. It should go back to that simplicity and that purity of drive. And herein lies the problem because you already have that. You have cars like the Lotus Elise, you, you have very, the, the Caterhams, you have very simple cars that have that ultimate driving pleasure as the goal. The problem Ferrari is having and will have is that they can't do that because they are not prestigious enough. And the make has this dichotomy and this big sort of problem between prestige and driving enjoyment. And I think that the two just don't go together. It'll be really interesting to see where they go from here. Be really interested to hear your views as well on this. At the end of these vlogs, I'm gonna try and include a car that you could buy right now. Today's is this 770 horsepower Ford Fiesta. Tomorrow I'm gonna to be filming a comparison between my Alpha GTA and my old M135i. Uh, and after that, I will be doing a comparison with the old one, the older one series, which is the 130. So that's some stuff that is upcoming, as well as some work with Ian Tyrrell on this particular car. Anyway, thank you all again for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel and please do subscribe to my Instagram as well. That's the best way if you need to message me. Thank you all and see you soon.